Hello, my name is Andy DeCourt, and I'm the pastor here at Phoenix Christian Reformed Church. It's my honor and privilege to come to you today from God's Word. Today we celebrate the greatest week in the history of the world. We celebrate and remember what Jesus did, starting on Palm Sunday with his triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem, his Last Supper with his disciples in the upper room, his crucifixion on Good Friday, his resurrection on Resurrection Sunday. It's the ultimate display of God's power to do everything God promised he would do. Well, what about us? This week, we don't feel like anybody's got ultimate power to do anything. We're hunkered down in our houses. We can't do what we want. I mean, a lot of us are working, but not the way we want. We can call friends on the phone and talk to people, but we can't go see them like we want. Most of us are eating, but we can't go to the places we want to and sit down and eat there with other people. Most of us are physically healthy, but emotionally, I'm not so sure. The U.S. crashed through 400,000 infections just recently. Yes, there's been some signs of progress and some things might be cresting. But we just want the coronavirus to be over. We want to get past this. We, we want our lives back. We're sick of all this waiting around, all this uncertainty. So what does the greatest week in the history of the world have to do with the week we're experiencing? The season of life that we're living through right now. Well, everything. As a church, we just finished our Lent sermon series. We went through one of God's prophets in Amos. Amos preached in about 750 to God's uh, northern kingdom. I'm going to read to you from another one of God's prophets. He, didn't, he preached a little bit later. After the, the Babylonian captivity that the tribe of Judah was in, maybe 520, 515, somewhere around there. Hear the word of the Lord. From the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. That happens 500 years before Jesus arrives on the scene. Zechariah is predicting something that will happen 500 years later. It's, only, it's one of the very few things that happens in Jesus' life that's in all of the four Gospels. I'm going to read from the Gospel of John, starting in chapter 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches, and they went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things that had been written about him and that they had, and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when Jesus raised Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that Jesus had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. There's really only one takeaway I have for you today in light of what we're going through as a people. I want you to think about and just note how many years went by from the words of Zechariah to the time when Jesus came into the city? 
Yes, the people were excited about Jesus because of, he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. But they had been waiting all this time. And it happens. After hundreds of years, God delivered his people through Christ. As God's people, we still wait. We still wait for God to, to deliver us. We certainly wouldn't choose to wait 500 years. God will deliver us. As we go through this season, may we remember God's people have long had to wait for him. God has his own timelines. But God delivers his people. Blessed is the king of Israel. May we see the whole world go after Jesus. A few announcements. First, I want to make sure to highlight this Friday. We have our Good Friday worship service starting at 7 p.m. You can join us online at 655 on our church YouTube channel. Second, I wanted to remind you all of the artwork challenge. For everyone in, uh, in our Little Lambs up through high school, if you make a picture of art using chalk or paint or anything you want, and include the word Jesus is risen or he is risen indeed, take a picture of your children with it, as many children as you want, or the whole family if you want, and we'll be stitching together an online display so we can see one another and enjoy one another's presence even if it isn't exactly the way we want. But I've gotten plenty of pictures already, so, so keep them coming. Uh, also, a reminder, our online giving tool is an option on the Phoenix CRC website. Uh, it can be a great tool for us to continue and enable God's uh, life-changing work among us. So thank you to those who've already started with that. Most importantly, today, over 350 letters went out to our neighbors the 350 houses closest to our physical church building. The letter basically said, we want to respond to God's word to us to be a good neighbor. We want to follow one of the most popular commands in the Bible is to love your neighbor as yourself, whether it's the parable of the Good Samaritan or, or throughout the, God's word. So the, the letter basically says, how can we help you? And then uh, contact us. And there's also an invite to watch the the Easter morning worship service from the comfort of their own home. So pray that, pray that they'll respond. Maybe for somebody the response would be, ah, maybe Christians aren't as bad as I thought they were, and they throw the letter away. Well, that's progress. Or maybe they'll be, you know, I could use some help with something, and they'll call. Or maybe they'll be, you know, I used to worship. I should at least worship God on Easter Sunday. I'm pretty desperate right now. And maybe they'll tune in. How great would that be? Pray that people will join in in their desperation, just as we should all be desperate for the Lord our God. Lastly, uh, Nathan and Paul and others have worked on some really special items for our worship service uh, this Sunday, so uh, we can look forward to that. I look forward to seeing all of you. Uh, service starts at 9.30, and you should be able to check in online at 9.25. I'll see you on a glorious Easter morning. May the whole world go after Jesus, especially as we remember and celebrate the greatest week in the history of the world.